Hey guys, welcome back, and we're gonna count down the top 10 recessive traits in ball pythons. Stay tuned. So I've got Sunny D here with me, who is a lavender albino ball python. He also has confusion, but lavender is a recessive trait. And a few things we need to go over before we get into our countdown is just a few different terms. So head stamp, that's going to refer to the markings that are on top of the animal's head, most likely a color or pattern change when we talk about them when it comes to recessives. And then the other thing is going to be alien heads, which are along the side of the animal. The the brown alien head looking shapes that go down the side of a ball python and then inside of the alien heads we are going to talk about keyholes or eyes. So now that we've got that out of the way let's get to it. Number 10, Pieball. The Pieball is one of the oldest morphs in cobalt pythons and it is a color and pattern mutation. It is one of the most recognizable morphs you will see in a ball python. It has an unrecognizable pattern that consists of blotches of browns or blacks, lines, oranges, depending on what other traits you have mixed in. Even as a standalone, it is a brown blotch with usually two black lines going through it. And throughout the body, you'll have those blotches and it will be with a bright white background. The head is usually that of a normal ball python with some darker blacks or darker browns on it. Number nine, Ultramel. Now, Squilliam here is not Ultramel, but he is head Ultramel, which means he has one copy of the gene. With recessive, you need two to make a visual. Ultramel is a very, I guess you'd call it a yellow. It almost looks like a caramel colored snake all the way across with high yellows and a chocolate where the browns would be. I'd say it's almost like banana, but caramel instead of yellow so it's it's a really neat gene it, it goes great with a lot of combos i don't know if you've seen the sunset ultramels that got produced over in europe but they look absolutely amazing ultramels a color and pattern mutation it was produced in the late 1990s by mark bell number eight puzzle puzzle is a pattern mutation it creates serrated like alien heads all down the side of the body and almost a greenish yellow earth tone pigmentation on it it is very big right now now a lot of people are saying puzzle is the new clown fortunately i don't have any puzzle here to show you it is a pretty neat recessive trait that does make the look pretty different visually. Number seven, Monarch. Monarch is part of the Ultramel complex. We already talked about Ultramel, the caramel colored snake. Now I'd say the difference between Ultramel and Monarch is Monarch is, it's almost like Ultramel and Desert Ghost mixed. It creates more contrast and it has deeper blacks in it than whereas the Ultramel is gonna look more of a chocolate color. These are deeper blacks in it. Number six, Zebra. Zebra is a pattern mutation for sure. And I'd say it's a, it, en it enhances your the brightness or contrast on your snake's color it was originally believed to be an incomplete dominant trait because the heads on it are they have some influence I, I guess you'd call it some marker it has a unique pattern if with with zebra you're going to want to look at it from the dorsal of the snake you can really see it. it it gives it a a look as though it has like zebra striping across it goes amazing with pastel a lot of people want to hate on pastel nowadays it looks better with pastel number five lavender albino We've got sunny d here now he's a lavender albino confusion so his pattern's a little different than what you'd say maybe his color's a little darker on those whites or lavenders i guess you'd call them but lavender albino is just a stunning form of the albino trait that gets better and better with age the older these snakes get with every shed the more lavender comes in where this white shows in between the yellow or orangish markings that you will see the head's gonna have a yellow or orange blushing on it the rest of the body's gonna have similar to a normal ball python alien heads except they're gonna be yellow and with the lavender on the white instead of your normal ball python coloring it is a very in my opinion underrated recessive trait and it has a lot of potential still it's yet to be explored fully number four paint or sentinel paint and sentinel have proven to be the same gene 
They are compatible with each other. We're gonna, for the purposes of this, call it paint. Fully intend to get in the paint project here very soon. It is a color and pattern mutation. It has a pixelated, it's almost like a granite mutation, and the alien heads on it almost look like they have a black glowing outline, in my opinion. It's a very underrated recessive trait, and I, it's, it's absolutely up there in my top four. Obviously, it's number four. Underworked, there's a lot to be done with it. Still, we saw paint clowns a few years ago, and they looked absolutely phenomenal. This gene paint sentinel was also originally believed to be a incomplete dominant because the hats will show some markers. But later on it was proved to be recessive because the markers aren't always indicative, almost like piebald, of whether you have a hat paint or not. Number three, by the way, what movie am I referencing by doing three like this, is the Clown Ball Python. The clown is what, I just love clown. Clowns what got me back into this hobby several years ago now. The way this mutates the pattern and the head stamp, it is just unmatched by any other pattern mutation in my opinion. So it is a color and pattern mutation. I'd say it's more so pattern than color. You're gonna have a busy head pattern, as you can see there. And now this is Bo, he's the guy we just picked up at Tinley from Brad Boa, and he is a lace clown. But lace being in a more of a Hansing gene, you'll see the essence of clown in him. And with him being lace, you don't see it as well, but you'll have a thick brown dorsal stripe. You can see that kind of going all the way up. It's not exactly a straight stripe, but you'll also get these mutated alien heads on the side where there's no keyholes and they almost look like, you know, teardrops coming down here, as you can see. The clown got its name because the first one imported had dark tear marks underneath the eye and it reminded him of a sad clown. Number two, sunset. This is Ember. She's not a sunset, but you can see that rusty burnt orange. That's what a sunset looks like. It is one of the only mutations, as I hold one that's not a sunset, that does this. She is a Enchi Calico yellow belly het clown, but sunset has a long story. So it was brought into the United States by Brian Barchuk. He had brought this in, in what was called the Viper Ball. I think there's a picture rotating around the internet of the Viper Ball, and the Viper Ball proved to not be a genetic trait. So coming off that, he was looking to hit big. He spent 70 grand on a Sunset Male import, a baby. He did not breed it the first season, by the second season, he paired it to three normal females. I believe he got 21 eggs and they all turned out to be normal. Now, Brian thought it was a co-dominant trait. He was almost positive and he thought it was genetic. So when he did not see any sunsets hatch out of those eggs, he shelved the project. And it wasn't until about four years later when he had an employee who had a strong belief in the sunset being recessive, encouraged him to pair the male with some of the hat females that he had produced. And Brian believed he was just wasting his time but was gonna do it to just try to prove his employee wrong and paired the male to the hat female or what he thought was just a normal because he did not believe this to be genetic and by the time he got done he cut the eggs at 52 days he had four of them and two of those ended up being visual sunsets proving that the project was recessive and that it was not a waste of seventy thousand dollars sunset is a color and pattern mutation now more so color than i, I wouldn't even say more so but I think the color is just so visually stunning that it overtakes the pattern. But if you look at it, it is a very, very pattern affecting mutation as well. It, it creates a pattern like no other morph you'll see. It is a very controversial morph. It seems like people either love it or hate it. We love it. And I believe it has a lot of untapped potential. There are some very big things going on. Brad Bow has got some amazing stuff out there with Sugar Sunset, Pied Sunset, Brock Wagner just produced a Puzzle Sunset that's amazing. Leviathan Snakes put out some Banana Sunsets that are awesome. 
and then balls to you over in England put out some Ultramel sunsets that are amazing as well. So with this one, yes, like most ball pythons, it may darken as it ages, it may brown out, but I think that can be fixed with what you pair with it. But as far as recessive traits go, it is absolutely one of the most visually changing genetics that you will find in ball pythons. Number one, Monsoon. It's William. He represented Ultramel even though he's not Ultramel. And he's gonna represent Monsoon even though he's not Monsoon. He is potentially Hep Monsoon and has some pretty good markers, but we will see. We're breeding him this year, hoping to produce some Hets. And then eventually pair him back and get visuals. Time will tell with him, but that being said, Monsoon is a pattern mutation and it is the most visually altering morph you will find available in ball python. It is fairly new. It was originally discovered by Dave Green in 2013. He paired together a pastel special and a super Mojave in hopes of making crystal combos. And one of the babies turned out to be a monsoon, which at that point was never seen before. And the pattern on a monsoon is just unreal. It is, it creates like a maze or a labyrinth, I guess you'd say, on the side of the snake. And it does what no other gene does. In 2022, Justin Kabelka, Canova, proved that Monsoon was the same and compatible as Moray, which was the European version of Monsoon that looks the same. Monsoon is a, as I said, a very new gene, very untapped potential. So far, there have been very few combinations. Brock Wagner just produced a Monsoon Pied, which looks good. But I'm looking forward to seeing a Monsoon Clown. I know Jersey Guys Balls is working on that as well as many others. Monsoon Lavenders, Monsoon Ultramels, Monsoon anything. This is just untapped. We don't know what it's gonna do mixed with other genes. And I can't wait to see it. We did a video about Het Monsoons. Check that out here. And if you liked this video, found it helpful, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and check out this video right here. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.